How's it going everyone? Welcome to another Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name is Frank Summers and today we are going to be talking about templates or templates, however you want to say that. Um, this is going to be referring back to the previous tutorial about the library. So if you did not already uh, view that or uh, watch that, I highly suggest you go back and watch that one quickly as we will be uh, touching on some of the topics that were, that was, that were discussed in that tutorial. So that said, why don't we move into Harmony, pop into Harmony here. And the first thing I'm going to do is quickly generate a, uh, a character's head. Um, I'm going to work mainly in the timeline view here because mo some of my viewers uh, are working in Harmony Essentials or uh, Advanced. Uh, so I'm going to just wor work in there uh, for the time being. Uh, so there's a button right over here that says Add Drawing. If I click that once, I'm going to hit Head. And if I hit just add, it's giving me the option to just kind of cre keep creating layers. So head, uh, I want a nose, uh, I want a mouth, uh, I want uh, an eye left, an eye right, I want a brow left, and a brow right, add and close. And that should be plenty to work with for now. I can use my brush let's pick a color for now we'll just use black for lack of anything better uh, and away we go we're gonna just give this guy a little bit of shape some cheeks I hope you guys can see this I'm using a thicker brush so that we can see it and I'm not getting too hung up on the drawing in this I have other I do other things where I concentrate on the drawing and we'll give them some hair spikes Works for me. Okay, so let's go to the nose. We'll just draw a nose. We'll give them a rounded nose. Great. And let's go to the mouth. Looks good. And the eye left, we'll just give them these little, you know, the pupil type thing. The eye right, same, same deal. Great. Uh, the brow left. Yep. And the brow right. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I will create a peg. Gotta make sure my display all display all is shown. Um, that little button right there creates a peg. I'm gonna call it head peg. Cool. And now it's a head peg. I'm gonna select all of my layers, drag and drop them on top of head peg, and now. Everything is parented to the head peg, which is nice. Moves everything together, nice, nice and neat. And I should probably adjust that pivot point to something that makes a little more sense. Cool, man. Looks great. So the other last housekeeping thing I want to do, because this is the way I am, I use Control Shift G. I collapse everything, select my head peg layer. Control Shift G creates a group. Also puts a new composite at the end of it. Um, and again, that's just me being. It's good housekeeping type stuff. One last thing I want to do is color. Let's just put in a skin tone of some sort here. I don't know. Skin. Something. I don't, you know. Great. Go to my head layer. Where are you? Boop. Great. And maybe even some hair. I don't know. And the reason I'm going through this is because just to reinforce good housekeeping type stuff. Labeling your layers properly. And we have a problem with this. There we go. Okay, good. I had to close a gap. Labeling your layers properly, labeling your colors properly so that you can see them quickly. Okay, and that's about it. So we have this head guy right here. And what we are going to do is now we have generated this very quick character. Uh, well, first I'm going to hit save. Um, I'm going to step out of Harmony, go into my Explorer. I'm going to make a new folder, and for lack of anything better, I'm going to call this folder Templates Example. Hey, I, one of these days I'll learn how to spell. Okay, I just made a folder, and if you, this is up to you for you to organize this on your end, wherever you have your project set up. I'm going to step back into Harmony, go over into my library view. 
And I'm going to right click down in this area. I'm going to hit open library. I'm going to navigate to where I just created that folder. There it is for me. I will hit select folder and there it is. It appears down in my library now with the lock. I will right click, right to modify, removes the lock. And now we're going to make a template out of this guy. By simply clicking on, I'm going to make sure everything's all collapsed. Click on that layer, drag and drop it into this pane of the library view, let go of it. I'm going to, it gives me a chance to rename it. I'm going to call it tem, template, template head. Tem, yeah, great, template head. And voila, there we go. We have created a template out of this head. Uh, I'm going to delete that. How do we do it from up here? In the, no, in the node view, simply select, select your group or whatever you're making the template out of. Hit call, copy and paste. Same thing, template head. Template head. Hit OK. Bam. Creating one from the node view and from the timeline view are both doing the same thing. They're both creating a template. If you are working in Harmony Premium, it is suggested that you do it from the node view um, instead of the timeline view um, because in Premium you've cr you have created more complex con connections than you can do from the timeline view in in the uh, in Essentials or Advanced. So doing it from the node view is recommended as it will maintain all of those connections. Uh, again, just to reiterate, if you are working in Harmony Premium, do this from the node view. Create your templates from the node view. If you're not, just do it exactly how I just did it. Drag and drop it right into there, right into the uh, library view. Now, why is that important? What did I go through all that for? I'm going to pop open a fresh instance of Harmony. Da, 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 da. I'm going to call this whoosh. Great. Create scene. Give it a hot second. Great. And as you can see, template examples is down there. There he is. And if I click on template examples, there's my template head. And if I click and drag him in there, there he is, template head. And if I take him and move him out of the way a little bit, I can drag in a fresh template head. And I can do this all day long if I so desired. And that is as simple as that as creating a template, making something that is readily available to you outside of your scene um, whereas if I may call back into Flash and Flash, you would have to go and find the scene or the FLA that you created the head in, dig through the library within there, copy and paste it out into a new document. The library view is allowing us to have access to all of our templates from, from wherever we are. Uh, and if you can see here, I have a bunch of stuff, you know, already filled that I, um, commonly call back to. Um, so this is a great way of keeping all of our assets in one place. Let's just close this and I'm going to discard. Let's get back. Let's get back whenever Harmony decides to. Okay, great. So now I'm back in here, my original document. And, you know, there his nose is rounded. I think I want to change his nose. I want his nose to be triangular, let's just say. Um, and what we would like to do is edit the template. So if I click on it, hit right. If I right click and go to edit template, give it a hot second here. Dee, 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 dee. There we are. Uh, if you can see this, the active windows have a green outline around them. This is giving us a visual reminder that we are editing a template. It's just kind of giving us a moment to, hey, you know, you're editing a template. Just make sure you know what you're doing here. And I'm going to go into his nose, click his nose layer. I'm going to delete it. Goodbye. And I'm just going to draw. Whoa, too fat. Let's go with a 20. I think I thinned it out a little bit. So uh, I'm going to give him a bit more of a pointier nose. Cool. Zoom out. Ta-da! Love it. Okay, let's hit save. It's telling me that it's no longer going to be used as an action template. Uh, it's just giving you a heads up that you have edited this. I'm going to hit save. 
Okay, I'm going to close this. We're going to go back into where we were. And uh, if I was to take the head and just kind of scoot them off to the side, and if I was to drag in the new template, there's our triangular nose. I mean, you may stop and say to yourself, hey, wait a minute, this guy over here still has our rounded nose. Whenever you drag in a template, it is creating a copy. Uh, so if I was to say, take this particular, if I was, this is the original one that I drew. And if I was to take the, let's say the mouth and alter his mouth in some fashion, maybe make it a little more straighter, something along the lines like this. And, I, and you would say to yourself, hey, I just changed the artwork here. If I was to drag in a fresh template, it is not going to update the template unless you are explicitly editing the template like we just discussed. That again, because every time we pull in a template, it's creating a copy. And why is it doing that? It's because it's protecting the original from any changes that you may have done to it. And the reason this is happening is because you may not be working by yourself, maybe working on a team of animators. And like if you are goofing around for whatever reason, if you needed to change the mouth, make it into a straight, like I did right here, um, you certainly don't want the model to be changed. You want it to remain the same, unless you are explicitly editing the template. I hope that's making sense. It gets a little complicated. Uh, so that said, why don't we just delete some of this stuff? Let's just let's just go back to square one. Whoops! I deleted all of my guys. There's nothing here. Well, guess what? Again, that's why we have templates. I can easily just drag and drop the new one in. So let's quickly talk about what an action template is. And an action template is is let's extend my animation there. An action template is exactly the same concept, but it is recording animation. So in this case, what I'll do is I will find his eyes, his eye layers, and I'm going to just very quickly create, turn on my onion skin. I'm going to animate, going to animate a little blink. First, it would be nice if I was using the proper color. There we go. There's that. And again, I'm making these very chunky so that you can see, I hope. And let's just do some quick in-betweens of the eye closing. I'm not getting too hung up on the drawing here because I just need to focus on the technical aspects of this. Okay, great. Let's just say this is amazing. And let's even just reverse it. And again, I'm using my bracket keys to quickly use my drawing substitution. Okay, cool, man. There's an amazing looking blink, right? So we can take these row of frames or exposures. We can select them. If I drag and drop from the timeline in the right hand of the pane, if I drag and drop this range into my library view, let go of it, I'm going to call it template, temp, template head, I'm going to call it blink. And I'm going to even call it uh, action. Tem template. You do not watch these videos for me to learn how to spell, that is for sure. I'm gonna hit okay. Now we have something that's called an action template. And an action template is just a, again, I'm gonna zonk all these. So I got rid of my blink. And now if I grab, I'm gonna do the reverse. If I wanted to put that blink back or repeat it throughout a scene, either in this scene or in another scene, I can just click it, drag it and drop it right where I found it in the first place. And there's my blink. And if I want to say, hey, I want to redo that blink, drag it and drop it. There we go. Took a second there. There's our blink. And the same could be said. I'm going to get rid of these blinks, actually. For again, I'm going to add just a very quick, I'm going to add some animation here. Turn the animate button. Okay, not great. Let's add a little bit of ease to this. Let's actually adjust these 
timing on this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's just, and we'll add a little bit of ease here. Actually, we'll just use the pre programmed ease over here. Great. Let's just pretend we like this little nod that he's doing. I can take these keyframes, highlight the selection, drag and drop the selection over into my library, template head, nod, and ace, ace, AT, I'll just call it action template. And again, if I zonk these keyframes, goodbye keyframes, there's no animation anymore here. If I take that nod, drag and drop it over here, let go of it, there's my nod, and I could do it throughout. I can drag and drop my nod again. And as you can see, it's building it's building up our library of action templates, blinks, head turns, uh, walk cycles, what have you. And if I wanted to get even crazier, I can find my eye layers. Here they are. I'll get my blink. Drag and drop my blinks back in here, and as he plays, there's our blinks. As he's twitching, as his nod is continuing. But as you can see, it's very easy to add in my blinks wherever I want them, wherever I need them to be. One thing I would like to talk about very briefly is that action templates are similar. They work similar to how After Effects and Photoshop are kind of work hand in hand. Uh, if I, in order for an action template to work, the original layering structure that you built needs to be maintained. If I alter the template at all and I try to drag in an action template, it's not going to work in a similar way that if I pulled in a Photoshop document into After Effects and then I went back into that Photoshop document and started adding layers into it, eh, you're going to run into problems into After Effects. After Effects will throw up that um, the color bars, it won't know where the layers were, uh, it'll freak out. So if I was to change the layering at all, so what if I, let's just give you an example. If I make a new layer here and if I call this <laughs> wart, and if I go and create, I'm going to give him a wart. <laughs> I'm going to make it pink. <laughs> A red, angry, gross-looking wart. Uh, what is? Where can I put uh, on his nose? <laughs> He's a, there you go. Great, fantastic. And let's expose it for the length of my shot. And I put the wart purposefully in this case between the two eyes. And I'm going to zonk out my animation so he's no longer blinking. Now, if I go back to my library and if I try to grab that blink animation and try to drag it, dra let me just do this too. If I grab my blink animation and try to drag it and drop it back in, I am not getting the desired results. As you can see, the word is freaking out. Only one eye is kind of blinking, the other one's doing something wacky. Uh, it's because I just broke the layering structure and Harmony is looking for the layering structure. Uh, so that's something that needs, you have to kind of take that into consideration when you're building your action templates. They need to reflect back to the original layer structure. And I think that's going to do it. I think that about will wrap it up for today. I thank you very much for joining me once again. Uh, as you can see, I have a red subscribe button down there. Uh, please click that if you want to follow my shenanigans. Uh, I update my Harmony tutorials every Monday. They generally are scheduled to post on Mondays at 4 p.m. Um, I do a Wednesday lunch live sketch, which goes up Wednesdays. Uh, I do them 12 noon Eastern Standard Time during my lunch break. Uh, I think I have Beast there you're looking at, um, but I have a bunch of them. Please feel free to uh, peruse my channel to find them if you, and, and, and enjoy them to your heart's content. Um, and yeah, I do random animation from time to time. I stick up um, whatever, whatever floats my boat at the moment. Thank you very much once again, guys, for joining me. Uh, I hope to see you again soon. Take care.